This video is for entertainment purposes only. Nothing should be taken as factual. This is all my opinion and for your entertainment. Thank you and enjoy. Hey everybody, this is Sonya with Melanin Goddess Life. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another astrological video. Today we're going to be doing another celebrity reading. Um, the celebrity I've chosen for this reading um, actually is a person that's going to be going into my special segment on Leo Risings because this person is a Leo Rising. So she's one of the reasons why I picked her because I found out she's a Leo Rising and she's going to be a part of that special little group that I am tracking for the year of 2022 because, you know, I'm also a Leo Rising. So I want to see um, if this special group has a theme <laughs> of our 2022. But anyway, um, this this person... Um, has had a very interesting, influential year. I would definitely say she is a part of pop culture. Uh, she is an icon. She is a savvy business person. Um, she's a mogul in her own right. And uh, she's had some interesting events that happened with her love life. The person that we're going to be spotlighting today in today's reading is none other than Kamora Lee Simmons. All right, Kamara Lee Simmons. So, you know, she's a very interesting person and she has had an interesting life, particularly in the area of her love life. So we're just gonna kind of dissect what's going on with her, get some uh, insight on what energy is going on with her right now and where what we could possibly see come up for her in the year 2022 and a little bit into 2023. Okay, again, and first and foremost, if you like these videos, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, please remember that these videos are for entertainment purposes only. Nothing that I am saying I am claiming to be factual. It is all my interpretation and my opinion um, based on the astrology of this per person. Again, entertainment purposes only. So, as usual, I have Googled Miss Kamora Lee Simmons' birth information. Um, I don't have a birth time for her. So the rising sign, again, is always 50-50 because if I don't have a birth time. But looking at the pattern of her love life, I'm pretty sure she's a Leo rising. And I'll explain that as we get further into the reading. So Kamora Lee Simmons was born on May the 4th, 1975, which makes her 46 years old. She has a birthday coming up. She'll be 47. So that makes her a Taurus sun. Aquarius moon and a Leo rising. So, um, yeah, she embodies a Taurus sun woman. Uh, this is a woman that loves nice things, uh, the finer things in life. She loves money. She loves uh, the creature comforts. She loves beauty because she's in the fashion industry. So this woman embodies Taurus energy. Um, she's also an Aquarius moon, and I can kind of see a little bit of that with her. Ta Aquarius moon people, uh, one of the biggest things that they can do is they can detach from their feelings. And I feel like Miss uh, Kamora Lee does that expertly because she can move on, uh, particularly in her relationships, from one relationship to another and not give it a second thought. Also with her Aquarius moon, this ties together with the fact that she is a global sensation. We cannot doubt, we cannot say that Kamora Lee Simmons is not a part of pop culture with her brand Baby Fat. It was everywhere all over, I think in the early 2000s. So we can definitely never take that away from her. So with Aquarius type energy, these are people that do very well with reaching the masses. These are people that do well with um, global influence. This, this, um, Particular energy bodes well for people now that we're in the day in the age of social media becoming famous through social media. I noticed there's a lot of social media uh, influencers. I that there is a lot of people that came up with social media and became stars or influencers through social media, and they have heavy, heavy Aquarian energy. So this really speaks to uh, how she was able to. Uh, touch so many people with her brand baby fat. Now, she's a Leo rising. Again, she's going to be a part of that special group. I'm a part of that group too. Um, and this is all about Leo rising. Leo number one is the uh, sign of the entertainer. So these are the people that even if they're not famous 
in the traditional way of being famous, like out there in the entertainment industry, these people are very popular. They're usually very popular in their uh, social circles. These people, these are the types of people that can go where, and they're just very likable and people are drawn to them. And they have a very artistic, dramatic, over the top entertainment type flair to them when they when they interact with people. So Leo Risings, yeah, she she really embodies a Leo Rising. So we're going to talk a little bit about her 2022 and what I feel like is going on with her. She's have, having some challenges at this time. I'm not really sure the full details on her romantic life, but I know uh, it's it's in a it's in an interesting space. So um, I did her love life. Um, I did the formula that I used to calculate her um, love life activation. Um, now, this formula I come up with and I determine at which age a person should see some type of shift or significant changes or movement within their love life. And it's based on four scenarios, depending on where you are in your love life. It's going to determine where you are in your love life will definitely determine uh, what could possibly be happening at that time. So I did Miss Kamara's calculations. So the four scenarios are, if Kamara is totally single, not in a romantic relationship with someone, this could be the energy of someone walking into her life for a long-term committed relationship, and the relationship is going well. This would be the energy of wanting to take the relationship to another level. So that could look like living together, um, that could look like engagement, marriage, or making a um, monogamous exclusive commitment to the other person. Third scenario could be if she's in a relationship, this could be uh, energy around a breakup if the relationship is not going well. And the fourth scenario will be, and, and I tie the fourth scenario with anything. And to be honest with you, with you, any of these things could happen within a year's span because we know how the energy of a Leo rising love life changes, you know, within a snap of a finger. But the fourth scenario would be, um, this would be the time that Kimura would be really taking account of how she does relationships. So this would be her trying to figure out what she wants in a relationship, what she wants in a partner, and what, and, and look at how she shows up in relationships, trying to improve how she shows up as a partner. The age in which I came up with where I feel like there should be some shift in her love life is actually the age of 47. So that means from her next birthday, which is coming up May the 4th until her next birthday, May 4th, 2023, uh, Miss Kamara Lee Simmons is going to be in relationship. Energy. So anything can happen. Now, she has a very interesting dynamic going on now. I'm not even really sure if she's actually legally married because there's some things that have come out with regards to her current husband um, that says that he was still married to someone else. Well, as far if I'm reading this, this correctly, he was actually married to two other people prior to marrying Kimura. And then he did say that he did lie to her um, in order for, and, and claiming he was divorced in order for her to get him get her to marry him. So in all honesty, I don't even know if they're legally married. So at this time, I think they're separated. Um, I'm not really sure, but I would definitely say beginning her next birthday and that span of the age of 47, something's going to change with regards to that. And to be honest with you, Kimora is a relationship girl. So I see don't her staying in this situation long, much longer because she loves relationships and she loves to be coupled up, even though they don't seem to work out. She is, she does give me relationship girl energy. So I could possibly see her moving on to another relationship here in the next few months. So that is my prediction with regards to, to that. Now, and then I'm going to verify that a little bit later in the reading um, because there's some things that are going on with her that I feel like, yeah, there's a relationship on the horizon for her. I just don't know who it's going to be with. <laughs> okay. Now, right now, at the age of 46, her theme of her 2022, which is only going to last until this May, her next birthday. So this actually started her last birthday, May 2021, until this next birthday. Her theme of her, uh, that year 
and it's winding down, was all around things that had to do with the 11th house. So this was definitely an unexpected energy because if you know what the 11th house is, it's ruled by the planet Uranus. Uh, and the planet Uranus governs unpredictability, unexpected changes, um, things happening just out of the blue. It's also the area that governs um, our friend groups, our social groups that we connect with, and that could be on or offline. It's It uh, connects with um, technology. Also the house of our long-term goals, dreams, and wishes. So I, again, I didn't follow too much of Kimora on outside of just the, the standard stuff that people know about her current situation. But this would say to me that from her last, last year up until now, there's been a lot of energy around her friend groups and the people that she connects herself with. So I'm wondering for Kimora if there was a shakeup of some sort with regards to her friends. Um, her social groupings, networking groups that she's a part of, if there was a big transition with regards to that. This could have also looked like her, um, again, uh, some of those friendships and social groups being shaken up and actually leaving her life and an influx of new people coming into her life at this time, uh, well, during that time. Um, this would also have looked like long-term goals, dreams, and wishes that she had for herself definitely went through a disruption or a possible change. So I'm wondering if there was some things that um, she thought that she would be doing and those, those goals, those dreams, those wishes, those projects, whatever those were, kind of had a disruption and an unexpected change to them um, within this last, this last year, this last several months. Um, this is also the uh, house of unexpected <laughs> events and uh, unexpected news. Anything that kind of like comes at us and we weren't expecting it, this ties heavily because she's an Aquarius moon um, and Aquarius is, is currently, uh, Saturn is currently in Aquarius. This ties into that whole situation she has going on with her husband or alleged husband. I'm not really sure what to call him, but her husband out of left field, <laughs> just, just hitting her unexpectedly. You know, I, I do believe that Kimora did possibly have no more than she is possibly saying with regards to his situation. But I don't know if she really, really knew that this man was still married to someone else and she was in a relationship with a whole bigamist. That probably did come out of left field for her with regards to that. But that's what's happened that had been has been happening to her uh since last year. Um when she gets turns 47 this next birthday. Um May 2022 to May 2023, she's going to move into the theme of that particular year of energy around everything that has to do with the 12th house. Now, this is going to look like a lot of healing, uh addressing a lot of traumas because I do believe she is holding on to a lot of stuff. So this is going to definitely be energy around her doing a lot of internal work, healing, uh, things that she suppresses or has been suppressing coming up. And she may have thought she dealt with it, but she's going to have to address it again. So this is going to be a great opportunity for Kamora to do therapy. If she's not already in it, she should be in it already. But if she's already been in therapy, this could definitely bring a time that she has some type of breakthrough with therapy. If she has not been in therapy, I would strongly suggest that she get in it because it is time for her to heal. Now, <clears throat> this is also going to have her um, possibly looking at reaffirming her spiritual life or developing a spiritual life because she's going to need that moving forward in her life to tackle the changes and the things that have come up that have come up for her in the past and that will soon come up with her as she moves through this 12th house energy of healing. Funny enough, I and mean, when it's not funny, um, this is also the area of the chart that governs places of confinement. So that's hospitals, rehab centers, and prisons. So this definitely sounds like something that she's going to be dealing with with her, her husband, um, that is going to be, from what I understand, doing jail time or doing prison time. So this ties into her dealing with that situation. So I don't know, you know, they do have children together. So this is not like she can just walk away from this relationship. 
she does uh, share a child with this man. So he's going to be in her life. So she's going to have to be dealing with him uh, with regards to his legal situation and with regards to whenever it is that he goes off to prison. So this will be a dynamic that she has to learn how to incorporate into her life. You know, I wish her the best on that. Um, this is also energy of her working behind the scenes. Um, if I was doing a reading for her right now, I would tell her that she just needs to work behind the scenes. This is her doing a lot of, um, again, working on herself, but working on projects behind the scenes. Um, she could be possibly doing a lot of charitable work behind the scenes. Um, but pretty much this is going to be an energy that's going to possibly take her out of the spotlight. And she feels like she wants to um, just protect herself, protect her children. So she may have this period of going through an isolation or just wanting to be solitary or be by herself. This would be great for her to help with her healing process over this over this year and, and into 2023. Um, so we got that's going to be the um, the theme of her 2022 as of her next birthday. Um, <clears throat> next thing we're going to look at is. She has a lot of activity in her seventh house, which all our Leo Risings have a lot of activity in the seventh house. So this is definitely, she has Saturn in the seventh house. Okay, and when Saturn goes through, the, through a house, particularly in the seventh house, the seventh house is the house of partnerships. It's the house of one-on-one -on -one relationships and connections with another person. And this is the marriage house. And this is also an area that governs legal issues. She has Saturn here in the seventh house. Saturn typically stays in a house for about two and a half years, and it has been there for a while. I would definitely say um, it's going to be there until Saturn will be in the seventh house for her and until actually March of 2023. So she has another year. So this says to me, um, because Saturn stays in a house for two and a half years, the last year and a half have had a lot of uh, hard lessons and dealings with one-on-one -on -one relationships. And that played out already. The situation she has going on with her current husband. When Saturn comes to a house, one of the things it does is it comes into a house and it wants to shake up that particular area of your life because it wants to see, are you on a solid foundation in this particular area of your life? It wants to do that because it wants only things that have a value and things that are going to be in this in your life for a substantial amount of time. It also wants to make sure you have the best and uh, um, with regards to what this whatever house it's in. So when it Saturn goes to a seventh house, it sometimes disrupts your relationship, your one on one relationships. Now, keep in mind. This is just not romantic. This is just not marriage. This is business partnerships. This could be uh, immediate family, best friends, um, doctors, people that your accountant, um, your therapist, people that you, again, make that one-on-one -on -one connection with. So it comes in and it disrupts the foundation of those relationships to see if there's cracks in the relationships. And it has been working heavily on Kimora in her marriage. And for the last year and a half. And again, like I said, she's going to have this energy in this particular area of her life until March 2023. She has another a year of this. So at this point, Saturn is now asking Kimora, is, do you want to stay in this relationship? Do you think this relationship is, is of value? Is it serving you? And if so, how are you going to restructure this to make this better? Now, Saturn could bring a breakup. And Saturn could bring, you know, a reconnection. It is all up to the person and the circumstances around the relationship. Now, also, there, um, this is the area that governs legal proceedings. And from my understanding, she does have some legal proceedings that she's going through. From my understanding, I think her ex-husband, Russell, is possibly suing her um, with regards to some money he alleges that she's taken from him. So she's being sued for that. I don't know if she's tied into her her husband's um, dealings uh, with this Ponzi scheme, scam. I don't know what he was doing. Embezzlement. I don't know if she's been pulled into that, but I'm, I'm sure at, certain, at a certain point she will be because she's his wife. So she's dealing with a lot of that. So she just really has a lot of heavy, heavy energy going on within the seventh house. 
<laughs> and it's going to be there for, for, again, another year. So we're going to see how this plays out. And remember, I gave you the, the, the relationship activation age for her is 47, which come, is coming up on her next birthday. So that's why I know that there is going to be something of significance that happens with Kimora's personal relationship with regards to her love life. Now, <clears throat> also looking at her chart, she has uh, Jupiter and Neptune in the eighth house. The eighth house is the house of other people's money, other people's resources. So this is the area that you share finance and, and resources with another person or another entity. This is also the house of any monies that you receive outside of your earnings, outside of what you earn at your job. So this could look like taxes, inheritances, loans, assets, property, joint ventures, child support. Um, this could look like lottery winnings. This could look like um, funds that you secure from a financial institution. And this is also the area that governs sex and intimacy. She has Jupiter there. Jupiter typically stays in a house for about a year and a half. She has a few more months of this energy. So when Jupiter goes into a house, it's there to expand it. It's there to bring growth, prosperity, opportunity uh, to that particular area of your life. So this is a great energy. Jupiter wants to come and bless and heal you. So this would be um, this would have been the last year, year and a half, a, ve a very beneficial area for her with regards to other people's resources, her benefiting from other people's resources. And this ties in a lot to, um, with regards to her husband. Um, because when you have Jupiter going through your eighth house, no matter who you are, um, even if the benefit is not coming directly to you, if it's coming through your spouse or your long-term committed partner or your business partner, if they're experiencing a financial windfall, it trickles down to you because you're benefiting again from other people's money. This is the house of other people's money. But keep in mind, if on the same token, if they're experiencing some financial issues, it is going to affect you in the same way. And this is what is playing out in Kimora's life. She is being directly impacted by her husband's um, illegal behaviors with regards to money. Another indicator that this has been an issue, because so basically with Jupiter, it was like a double-edged sword for her. Yeah, you were benefiting with all this money and, and everything that coming to you, but <clears throat> look at how it blew up. Look at what happened. And the reason it blew up was she also has Neptune in the eighth house. Neptune stays in transits a house for about um, 14 years. So this has been in her, her eighth house for several years, years prior to her even meeting this man. Um, so what Neptune does is Neptune is the planet of intuition, imagination, dreams, spirituality, but it's also the planet of fantasy and it's also the planet of a little bit illusion delusion and confusion so with regards to neptune in the eighth house this could definitely um being that kamara was deceived now i'm not gonna say she didn't ultimately figure it out i don't know here or there but this definitely is an energy of she really did not know what was going on with the dealings of his money and she was deceived. So just like Jupiter helps you benefit through a partner's um, windfall, Neptune will have you not seeing things clearly with regards to your interactions and your ties with money with another person. So yes, <clears throat> Kamora went into this and you also have to look at, this is the area that governs intimacy and sex. So she made an intimate connection with this man. You can't get more intimate than your spouse. She was deceived. She really found out later on that this man was not who he said he was. This man definitely didn't have the money that he said he did. <clears throat> and it all blew up. Like I said, the Jupiter made everything great. It made everything great while it was great until that Neptune kicked in. And she didn't see this person clearly. She made an intimate connection with someone she really did not know. And that was that Neptunian energy. 
Um, this was also sex. So sharing yourself with someone that you did not know. This was just a, a powder keg in this area of her life that ultimately exploded, unfortunately. Um, now, <clears throat> she has um, Uranus in her 10th house of career. Uranus stays in a house for about uh, seven years, if I'm not mistaken. So for the last couple of years, her, her career life, when you have Uranus in a particular area of your chart, Uranus is a planet of unexpected change, unpredictability, transformation, reform, tearing things down. It doesn't want to do things like it always does it and turning it into something new. With that energy being here in the 10th house, and it's going to be there for a, a, a few more years, her career life is going to go through a, 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 a series of changes, unexpected changes. Uh, we may see Kimora... Uh, kind of all over the place with with regards to her career, branching off into new things, trying new things, revamping. I think at one point she was trying to revamp or relaunch baby fat. So that's that Uranus energy, tearing it down and rebuilding it in a different, more innovative way. So we're going to see a lot of changes with regards to her career. But this is also the area that governs the titles that we wear. So um, this I, I consider this a relationship house because this is where we change our title. This is where we go from being a single person to a married person or a divorced person to a single person. This is where we go from being, you know, um, single or, or, or you, you don't have kids to so you becoming someone's parent. Now you wear a different title. So this has everything to do with uh, the title changes that she's going to be experiencing. So it very well looks like Miss Kimora could be getting a divorce, but I don't even know if you can divorce somebody that you're not married to. But it actually activated itself when she dis when she discovered or when we discovered that he had other wives and she's not his wife. So now she's no longer his wife. She's just now Kimora Lee Simmons the single person. I think that's how that works. So a, a series of twists and turns with regards to her career and career changes. Now, this energy bodes well for her reinventing herself in her career path, reinventing herself. So this could definitely, you know, work to her advantage if she works it. So don't she, this is the energy of not limiting yourself and just thinking outside of the box, I would say. Um, she also has her nodes are transiting. The North node is transiting her 10th house. Uh, the South node is transiting her fourth house. The, the, the North node is all about our destiny and where we're going. So it's going through her 10th house. This is all about career changes. This is all about taking your career to a new level, but also maybe a different path when it's coupled with this Uranus uh, planet. But she also has um, the South Node in the fourth house. The South Node is about um, dealing with things from the past, dealing with issues, and it's in her fourth house of family. So this is all about her dealing with what's going on in the dynamics of her family. You know, it's a very uncomfortable energy because it brings up things that we never expected we had to deal with, or it brings up things that we have been avoiding. And now we have no choice but to deal with things that have to do with the fourth house. Um, so that's our home, our, our physical home. That's our family. That's our children. Um, this is also the prominent women in our family. So I, I equate the fourth house with our mother. So I'm not really sure if there's some issues going with on with her mother that she may need to address here in this next year to year and a half. Uh, she may be moving. Changes in the dynamics of her her household. Maybe there's people moving in and out. Maybe she's buying and selling property. Maybe she's moving. She's downsizing. But a lot of activity around changes, substantial changes that may be very uncomfortable for her over this next year. She also has Pluto in the sixth house. Pluto is a very slow moving energy. It actually stays in a house anywhere from 14 to 30 years. It's in the sixth house of her of health and fitness. Uh, her work environment, her daily personal routine. Um, this could be uh, also the house of our pets and of service to others. It's at a critical degree, or well, it's about to approach a very critical degree in astrology. Um, and I'm wondering if 
it, she will be experiencing some health challenges here in the next um, between now and the next this year next year. Uh, I hope not. But this is a time for her to transform herself. So this actually could look like um, hopefully it's not any health issues that she may be going through. But this is an excellent time for her to address any uh, underlying health issues that she may have. This is a great time for her to totally transform because Pl uh, Pluto is the planet of transformation, death and rebirth, rebirth and evolution. So she could be transforming how she takes care of herself mentally and phys physically. So this could be her adopting a new eat a way of eating, veganism, vegetarianism, uh, eliminating certain foods from her diet. Um, maybe she's taking a more holistic approach to how she eats and how she heals her body. This could definitely look like her weighing heavily with um, taking care of her mental health because she really needs to protect that at this time. Um, but the dying off of how she does things by way of her health and the rebirth of how she's taking care of herself. This also looks like uh, this is the area that governs our work environment. So again, when you have those changes in the career house, your work environment changes. So a total transformation in her work environment uh, could be happening for her. Now, this is the house of pets. I don't know if she has a pet. Maybe there is a possibility of a pet transitioning over. I'm not really sure. I, I, I can't really tell when it when it's pets. But her day-to-day -day personal routines changing, having to change. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that she possibly could be moving. So now... Uh, a move always shakes up our day-to-day -day routine. Maybe that could be something like that. Um, now, one last thing I'm going to talk about is her um, her Jupiter in her natal chart. Um, her Jupiter, which for a woman represents um, her husband or long-term partner, um, it's in the sign of Aries. And typically... One of the indicators that someone is about to have a change in their love life, depending on where they are, and let's just say she's she's single, because she is. With that kind of energy, her Jupiter is in Aries in her birth chart. Jupiter is going to go into Aries um, May 25th, 2022. It's going to stay there until October 2022. It will go back into Pisces, but then December 2022, it will go back into Aries and it will stay there until May 2023. I know I gave you a lot of dates, but okay. When Jupiter goes into Aries and it's back in the natal sign that it, that it was in your natal chart, that triggers a change in your love life for a woman. So this could definitely be Kimura meeting someone during these windows, these time windows. So I would not be surprised if she starts a new relationship um, this year, starting uh, her next in May um, until May 2023. There could be a new relationship on the horizon for her because her natal Jupiter in Aries is going to be activated during that time. Could see someone coming into her life and her developing a relationship. And it wouldn't be surprising because, again, she is a Leo rising which means her seventh house is ruled by Aquarius. That is one of the harder placements when it comes to love because it's a lot of unpredictability within that. So your relationship started really fast and then they end just as fast. Or you get into these really, really weird dynamics of your relationship. Some of the things that happen when you are a Leo rising is sometimes you are in relationships where you are not physically with the person. You have long distance relationships. Um, sometimes this draws in people that are very, very different from who you are or who you would think that you would be with. This also brings in people that are emotionally detached. Sometimes you have a hard time uh, connecting with a partner. Um, this could be getting together under strange circumstances. Um, so this could look like, crazy enough, someone being in a relationship with someone in prison. <laughs> something to that effect. Um, but the relationship dynamics are just very, very strange. Now, it doesn't always be, it's not always like that because this energy for me usually dies down a little bit later in life. Um, these are people that can have multiple marriages. These are people that can uh, possibly not marry at all or just have some different 
type of dynamic on their relationship and how they see relationships and how they do relationships. But um, as far as the stability of the relationship, it actually works better if the person um, doesn't marry until like after 30. I would say a Leo rising that marries in their 20s, there is a high probability that they're going to get divorced and marry again. But as you get older, that energy it decreases. Now, that's not a guarantee because this could also be multiple, multiple marriages if you don't learn how to do relationships in the way that needs to be done because uh, Leo Rising's relationships just cannot be the same. They cannot look like anyone else's. They have to be carved out exactly what works for the two of you, okay? So my predictions for Miss Kimora Lee moving forward and I'm going to base them on her next birthday. There's definitely going to be uh, more pressure with regards to her love life. I think she's going to finally make a decision with regards to this marriage. I don't really know if they have to get, the, if there's some kind of legal proceeding that they have to go to, being that they're not really legally married. I'm not really sure how that works, uh, you know. But um, definitely her making a decision with regards to the ending of this relationship. I do, do believe that she's about to transition right into another relationship after this one is over. But again, like I said, she has 12th house energy going on. So she's going to be dealing with this man from the standpoint of him being in prison. And the 12th house represents prisons. Um, a lot of twists and turns with her career, but this could definitely be uh, advantageous for her with regards to her career with changes in that. And um, as far as the area that she's going to have a lot of joy and blessings over the next year and a half, that's going to be in her ninth house. So this could look like uh, international travel, doing foreign business. Um, she might just decide to just move out of the country briefly. Um, it may be better for her. And uh, educational pursuits. And her whole belief system is going to change. There's going to be a really a big shift in her belief system and her spirituality. And that's what I see from Miss Kimora Lee Simmons. I wish her the best of luck. Again, she's going to be one of those that I add to my list that I'm going to just kind of be watching out to see how her 2022 pans out for her. Um, if you're interested in a reading with me, please visit my website at www.melanangoddesslife.biz. I have my metaphysical products on there if you're interested in any manifestation candles. I'm also on Etsy under the same name, Melanin Goddess Life. Please follow me on all the social media outlets, um, Facebook, Twitter. I don't do a lot of Twitter, so don't follow me on there. But Instagram and Facebook. And most importantly, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Melanin Goddess Life. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.